Hey guys, Jay here and welcome to another cosplay tutorial. Today I'll be making Syx's Claymore from Kingdom Hearts. So I don't have a template for this, but that's because I didn't use one. Uh, I just used a blown up image that I put in grayscale and printed out. And then I just kind of drew on it to unblur it a little bit. I drew on it with Sharpie, I believe. And then that would so I could figure out where things are supposed to go, um, where things were blurred together, like all the different lines. Um, they were really blurry, so I had to do that. Um, but yeah, that means I don't have a template, sorry. But you should still be able to follow along with this, along with the image. And um, it's just the official image of the Claymore that's on the concept art or the official reference sheet or whatever it is. I'll link that below. Um, I'll also tell you the scale, which will be above me or beside me somewhere, which with how tall this thing needs to be um, with a picture or whatever. You'll see what I mean. If I remember to, I'll put that in the description, like an actual image that you can download and just print right out. I'll see what I can do about remembering that. If there's not one down there, then that means I forgot that I've been too busy. Anyway, let's get started. I start by printing out a scaled up image of the Claymore that I used Inkscape to add darker lines to, as the image was pretty blurry. This way I knew exactly where to cut. Then I cut off the head and didn't print it out with the handle, and traced the body onto 10mm HD foam. I'm only using this foam because I don't have any other use for it. It's a little harder to work with, so this means I can use it up a bit more. I use a long T-square ruler to mark where I'm going to cut out a channel for the support rod, which will be a wooden dowel. Then I cut out the entire body using a utility knife, keeping it at a 90 degree angle. I also use a smaller X-Acto knife to get into the little circular cutouts. I also cut out the channel, which is about half an inch wide, as well as I cut out two more body pieces from normal 10mm EVA foam. And here's how the layers fit together. To glue all the layers together, I use contact cement. I brush it on with a cheap wide brush to get the fastest coverage, and use two layers because the first layer always soaks into the foam. Then I put the pieces together. If you want to, you can rough cut the two outer layers and line up the center layer to your outline, then cut the excess off. But I'm gonna sand it anyway, so it's not a big deal. Just make sure the dowel can still fit in the channel. I do the exact same thing with the head and cut out three layers. I also cut off the back spike at the point where it starts to overlap the body. I'll add this as a top detail that overlaps later. I also figure out how I'm going to attach the head. I'm going to use the handle from a Spirit of Halloween scythe from my 2020 Halloween video and have it go into a channel that I cut into the head. I cut up into the body where the scythe handle will be attached permanently and glue that in place with Gorilla Glue. I ended up adding one more layer of 5mm foam to each side of the body and the head to thicken them up just a little. Then I used the printout and cut the bevels off the edge, and then traced that onto the pieces. This makes it so I know where to start the bevels at, and I use my Dremel with a sanding drum to sand the large bevels all the way around the body. This took almost a good week on and off to finish just the body. The belt sander would have been way faster, but since the bevels were so long and the claymore isn't that thick, it's very easy to mess up and sand too far and ruin the entire thing. I also had to be careful with the head because I had to do this on the inside cutouts without removing foam from the spike edges because those need to stay at 90 degree angles. Also, the head's layers didn't match up that well, so I used a utility knife with a brand new sharp blade to cut away the excess to line up the edges a little bit better. This is basically impossible to sand them flush without hitting other parts of the head and gouging pieces out, which I don't want. For the top raised detail for the spike piece on the head, I used the rest of my 10mm HD foam, as well as a layer of 5mm foam under it to thicken it up just a little more. I made one for each side, and after cutting it out normally, I drew a line where I wanted the bubbles to start, and then used a utility knife to start taking some of the foam off to make sanding a little bit faster. I also did this on the rest of the bevels, but I forgot to mention it. Okay, so it looks like I completely forgot to talk about this part. Before adding the extra 5mm foam to each side of the head, I cut out a channel for the scythe handle piece to fit into. The 5mm foam coupled with the spike detail piece will completely hide the channel. Then I glue the spike detail onto the head and I used contact cement again. And now here's what it looks like with the head attached. I won't glue it in place as making it come apart will be much easier and better for storage and travel. I used the inside of the piece that I cut the bevels off of on the printout to figure out where the diamond and line details go on the faces of the body, and then mark those out with a sharpie. Then I used a T-square ruler to make sure I get the lines straight and cut shallow lines along the marks that I made. Technically these look like they're drawn on in the games and cutscenes, but this separation looked really cool, so I decided to do it. To make it so the head can't rotate while in use, I added two holes on either side of the channel, as well as matching ones on the body. 
and use two quarter inch dowels that are about three inches long as supports, which are glued into the body side of the prop. This will also help align the head when putting it together. Sadly, it's been nasty out and I can't get the camera outside to paint without risk of damage to it. But I used a few layers of black plastic dip spray followed by silver spray paint. And then while still outside, after the silver dried, masking that off and using blue spray paint on the parts that needed to be blue. Then I brought it inside to do the rest of the paint with brush on acrylics, starting with the spike detail on the head, which I masked the bevels off as those need to stay silver, followed by a dull yellow for the face. To make the spike at the pommel of the handle, I freehanded a cone pattern and just kind of winged it. Then once I got a size that I liked, I traced it onto 6mm foam. I also used the circle cutter to make a base with a hole in the center out of 5mm foam, but you can easily just do that with a knife, but the cutter just makes the circles look a lot better. Also, make sure the hole in the middle is wide enough to fit over the handle, but small enough to be really snug. We ended up losing this piece at the convention because I didn't glue it down, but that was because I wanted it to be able to be taken off so that you can use the plastic handle underneath to set on the ground to lean it up against the wall. But I must have made it too loose because we have no idea what happened to it. And I used contact cement again to glue the two pieces together. Now I need to paint the face details, but first, you can see on the top of the screen there I added 10mm pieces to the end of the face. I did this on both sides. I didn't realize that this was actually supposed to be there, and it doesn't look right anymore. But nothing I can do now. The entire end that connects to the handle should be this thick with a layered look. They were also painted with that same yellow as the spike piece. If you add this before sanding, you can make it look more accurate. Anyway, I just use blue acrylic paint on the diamonds, and it can be sloppy around the edges, just so long as you don't go over those cut lines. This is because the edges will be covered anyway. I tape off the blue so that I can use black around the edges of the diamond pieces, as well as down the center line. I also contact cemented 4mm foam to the handle to thicken it up a little, as well as a cone shape to the end and painted all that white while painting the pommel spike black. I didn't use a clear coat because that'll dull the silver, but here it is all finished. Alright, so that's the tutorial on Syx's Claymore from Kingdom Hearts. So I did mention in the tutorial that it comes apart into a bunch of different pieces. So that is, I'll show you right now actually. So it's really hard to do this. Uh, just right here without it being on the table, but the handle comes off Well, I should do this first actually uh, The hand this is the back side So all the seams are showing on the back side that way It's the good side for pictures and the bad side is just what's up against you so nobody sees it But so this comes off and I did mention we lost this at the convention This is a new one that I made. This isn't painted. This is just raw foam right now um, just for this part of the video, but um, that one's on a lot tighter, so it's not gonna fall off. The other one was like falling off really easily. Anyway, so that comes off. That way you can set it down on this end and set it up against the wall or something. And then this comes off and this just goes in a box. As you can see, this is quite a bit longer than the dowel that's inside it. So that shortens it a little bit for the trip when you're going somewhere. And then put that down. This comes off so the head comes off completely and you can probably see there are three pieces here there's this long piece that I talk about in the tutorial itself and then these two little pieces here these are dowels I mentioned them in the tutorial but I do a little bit more here right now because I don't think I explained it too well these are dowels that are one fourth inch thick and I cut them about three inches long and they're going uh, maybe two inches, I don't know, two or three inches, and they're going down into the the body. And then I super glued them in place so they don't come out. And then on the inside here, inside here, this is where the big pole goes inside to keep this on, but there's also, it's almost impossible to see, but there's two holes in here that correspond to these two dowels. And that is what keeps it from rotating. I mean, honestly, this keeps it from rotating too, this big spiked piece, but just for further uh, support to help stop it moving around or anything, those help a lot. Like it changed a lot. Also, you might want to clear coat this. Um, this one has chipping on the silver 
a ton. I'm gonna have to redo this over. But uh, I didn't clear coat any of this because I wanted the metallic to stay metallic and usually clear coat ruins that. So I'm gonna have to go over that again with more metallic and that sucks but there's nothing I can do about it. But that's just a lesson that everyone's gotta learn. So that is it for this video. If you like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.